Imagine moving faster than the speed of sound through the air. With its X-59 vehicle, NASA may be able to reopen the door to supersonic travel, but this time without the loud boom that comes with it. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. Today we'll tell you about the new technology NASA announced that will change airplane travel forever. So let's begin. Since the beginning of aviation, flying faster than the speed of sound has meant zipping through the air in a plane that makes a loud sonic boom. This is a huge noise that sounds like a loud crack of thunder as it goes down to the ground. Imagine, though, that you could go around the world at more than 1100 miles per hour without being bothered by the disturbing and shocking noise. Something that hasn't been possible for decades would become possible all of a sudden. A whole new world of travel and aviation for consumers. This is a dream that NASA wants to make come true. At the Armstrong Flight Research Center, which is just outside of Lancaster, California, NASA is at hard work on the X-59 Quest, which stands for Quiet Supersonic Technology. This plane is a demonstrator that is made to fly faster than the speed of sound while making only a sonic thump. Traditional supersonic aircraft can make a sonic boom that is louder than 100 decibels while they are in the air. Because of this possible danger, the Federal Aviation Administration of the United States banned commercial supersonic flight over land in 1973. But the X-59 was built to reduce the shock waves that cause a sonic boom when it is in flight. As a result, the sound level of the X-59 at ground level is 75 decibels. NASA says that it is about as loud as a car door slamming while it is moving down the street. NASA and Lockheed Martin went back to the basics of aerodynamics to figure out how to make this plane fly with a low boom. The end result is an airplane that is both complicated and surprisingly easy to fly. Physics and aerodynamics have been around since the beginning of time, says David Richardson, who was in charge of the X-59 program at Lockheed Martin. This is something that makes Mother Nature happy to see. The plane is being built to be as perfect as possible so that it can fly faster than the speed of sound while making as little noise as possible. In the high desert of California, workers have been putting the X-59 through its paces to get it ready for its first test flight. The hangar is part of the building where the X-59 is put together. When seen up close, the plane with the needle-like nose looked like it came straight out of a 1950s science fiction comic book. It had smooth, flowing lines and a narrow cockpit in the middle that was hidden from view. NASA and Lockheed Martin thought of it as the supersonic plane of the future, and they were also in charge of building it. The goal is to convince governing bodies like the FAA that the ban on supersonic passenger flights over land can be lifted. It's possible that this change will make it possible for people other than fighter pilots to fly faster than sound in the future. If this happens, people will be able to fly faster than the speed of sound for the first time since the Concorde was taken out of service in 2003. To understand how a sonic boom works, you need to understand the basics of sound physics. Imagine a pulse moving through a slinky at the speed of about 340 meters per second. This is how fast sound moves from one place to another. At its core, sound is a wave of compressed air. When an airplane moves through the air, it pushes a stream of air in front of it. This causes compression waves to be made. But when a plane flies at supersonic speeds, it moves faster than those waves of compressed air can move out of the way. Because of this, the waves get stuck in the plane's path. Because of this, the plane sends shock waves to the ground, which people on the ground can hear as a sonic boom. A shock wave can be caused by any big change in the plane's shape, like when the cockpit sticks out at the front of the plane or when the tail sticks out at the back. If you want to cut down on the shock waves that reach the ground, you will need to change the shape of the plane to make it much more streamlined. To do this, any differences in the shape of the plane will need to be smoothed out and spread out over a longer body. NASA and Lockheed Martin did the same thing with the X-59 spacecraft. The airplane is 99 feet and 7 inches long, but it can only carry one person. The nose of the plane is more than 30 feet long and takes up about one-third of the plane's total length. It connects smoothly to the plane's swept-back wings and single engine in the back. Larry Cleot, who was the technical lead for acoustic testing on the X-59 at NASA, says that all of these things work together to make sure that shockwaves made in mid-air are well-behaved. Cleot said, We want to keep the shockwaves parallel and separate from each other, 
so they don't combine to make a powerful sonic boom. So we are spreading these changes in volume out over a longer time and making them more gradual across the whole plane. The X-59 is so long and has such a sleek design that there are no windows in the cockpit that face forward. In its place, the pilot uses something made by NASA called External Vision System, or XVS. The XVS uses two cameras above and below the plane to create an image that is shown on an HD screen. This image is a real-time view of the front of the plane. On the other hand, the XVS can also work as a heads-up display, or HUD, which shows information like the plane's altitude, speed, and flight path. NASA's X-59 flight simulator at Armstrong has been used to test out the XVS. NASA test pilot Nils Larsen is going to be one of the pilots who uses the XVS to fly the X-59. And he showed me how the system works. Larson spent the morning putting one of NASA's F-15s through its paces during a routine flight test. Then he went inside, away from the 114-degree heat outside, and started putting the flight simulator through its paces. Larson thinks that the feeling of flying with a cockpit window and the feeling of using the XVS display are not all that different. The picture of the real world that the cameras take and the kind of information that would normally be shown on a fighter's plane's heads-up display can be combined to great effect which is the benefit. The XVS lets pilots see things like flashing warnings or colorful writing over the horizon that they wouldn't normally be able to see from the cockpit window. NASA will send the X-59 into space along with an F-15 fighter jet. The F-15 will act as a chase plane and measure the shock waves the X-59 makes while it is flying. NASA will use Schlieren photography to take pictures of the shock waves, which may be the most interesting thing the space agency does. Larry Kliat has worked on the X-59 program for NASA for many years, planning, testing, and building it. All of this work will come to a head during the first test flight, which will be a turning point. Kliat says, we're going to have a lot of people staring at data, waiting to see the very first sonic thump from the X-59 to make sure all of our work is paid off, says Kliat. You know it's going to happen in the blink of an eye. A sonic boom is 200 milliseconds long. And that's what all of this is about, 200 milliseconds. It's possible that the X-59 will make it possible for private companies and airlines to offer regular people around the world supersonic flights again. David Richardson, who works for Lockheed Martin, thinks that people could start taking commercial flights as soon as 2035. These will change the whole way the game goes. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and comment down your thoughts on this. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching this video.